Brilliant Audio. Quicksilver by Dean Koontz. Performed by Todd Haberkorn. My name is Quinn Quicksilver, or QQ to the mean kids when I was growing up. But I can't blame my parents because I don't know who they are. Soon after birth, I was abandoned on a lonely highway, seven miles outside of Pepto, Arizona, where 906 people pretended that the place where they lived was actually a town. Swaddled in a blue blanket, nestled in a white bassinet made of plastic thatching, I had been placed on the centermost of three lanes of blacktop, where I was found shortly after dawn. Although you might not think that this was about as bad a start in life as one could have, I assure you it could have been worse. For one thing, this was coyote country. Had one of those creatures found me, it wouldn't have suckled me as did the wolf that saved abandoned Romulus, the founder of Rome, but instead would have regarded me as a grub hub delivery. I could also have been run over by an 18-wheeler and turned into pate for vultures. Fortunately, I was found by three men on their way to work. The first, Hakeem Kaspar, was a lineman for the county, as in that Glen Campbell song I've always found lovely but weird, though at the time I was discovered on the highway. I hadn't yet heard it. The second, Bailey Belshazzar, worked as head mechanic at one of the country's first wind farms. The third, Caesar Melchizedek, was a blackjack pit boss in an Indian casino. According to a newspaper story at the time, Hakeem tucked me snugly in the passenger side footwell of his electric company truck and drove me to the county sheriff's office, with Bailey and Caesar following in their vehicles. Why they felt it necessary that all three should turn me into the law, the newspaper didn't say. This was all I knew of those men until years later, and running for my life. I visited one of them with the hope of learning some small detail that might be a clue as to who or what I am. With a safety pin, a small envelope was fixed to the blanket in which I was wrapped. Neither Hakeem nor Bailey nor Caesar had dared to open it, evidently because they had watched too many years of CSI shows and feared that they would smear the kidnapper's fingerprints. Either they thought I had been snatched by some fiend who lost his nerve and left me to the mercy of fate on that hot morning, or they figured someone had nabbed my parents and were demanding a ransom for me. When the sheriff tore open the envelope, he found only a card on which was printed Quinn Quicksilver and my date of birth. In those days, no one in the state of Arizona had the surname Quicksilver. Nevertheless, Everyone at once assumed that was my name. I have been saddled with it ever since. Of course, Quicksilver is another name for the liquid metal Mercury, which was named after the Roman god Mercury. He was the messenger of other gods. Valued for his tremendous speed, the guy could accelerate like crazy. And though Quinn is a variation of Quentin, it also derives from the Latin Quintus, which means fifth or in certain contexts, five times. So perhaps it wasn't my name, but a cryptic message meaning accelerate five times, though you will not find this advice in any book about caring for a newborn any more than you will find the instruction marinate in olive oil with basil leaves. I then became a ward of the county, the youngest ever dropped on that child care agency. No foster family was willing to take in a three-day-old whose only possession was a soiled swaddling blanket and who had, in the words of Sheriff Garvey Moncton, strange blue eyes and an eerily direct stare for such a tiny little cocker. Consequently, I was sent out of county to Mater Misericordiae, an orphanage run by Catholic nuns in Phoenix. By the time I was six, it became clear that I was not adoptable. Among adoptees, infants are the most desirable age group, and they are usually placed in stable homes faster than you can say coochie coochie coo. This is because babies are generally cuter than older kids, with the possible exception of Rosemary's famous baby, but 
also because not enough time has passed for them to be screwed up by their birth parents. Each grinning infant is a personality waiting to happen, and therefore amenable to being sculpted into a reflection of those who adopt him. Although I was cute enough and willing to be shaped like clay, there were no takers for Quinn Quicksilver.'